Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock with John Ramdina and Robin Black. Coming up in just a couple of minutes as we'll be discussing charges that a top welterweight is facing. A big fight at 155 pounds is being targeted and we'll hear from one half of this Saturday's UFC main event. Benson Henderson steps back into the octagon Saturday night, less than a month removed from his decision loss to Donald Cerrone. Henderson is jumping up to 170 pounds for the chance to meet Brandon Thatch in the main event of the Fight Night card, and Henderson spoke to Robin Black and I about the decision to take this fight. Having fought here in Denver before against Frankie, I felt great, I felt fine. And having you know wrestled in Denver before uh, in the past, coming to here on short notice and, and wrestling, um, I was able to, to handle that, and that's why we agreed to take the fight here in Denver. Most guys, the UFC asked, they all said no, because Brandon's a tough kid, you know, but mm-hmm. he's up and comer, so they weren't really, really too worried about Brandon, but they were worried about the elevation and being five rounds. On UFC Tonight this past week, it was reported that a lightweight bout between Habib Nurmagomedov and Donald Cerrone is being worked on with the targeted date of May 23rd at UFC 187 over Memorial Day weekend. Nurmagomedov has been out of action since last April after suffering a knee injury, while Cerrone has won seven straight, including two wins already this year. Earlier this week, during an interview with BloodyElbow.com, World Series of Fighting fighter Andrew McInnes made accusations of Glayson Tebow being a heavy juicer and stating that he's the exception of a user that has had longevity in the sport. Not surprisingly, Tebow responded with a statement to MMAmania.com denying these accusations and stating he has had more drug tests during his career than McInnes has had fights. Tebow has had 43 pro fights and been with the UFC since 2006 and has never failed a drug test during his career. And UFC welterweight Matt Brown is facing charges of assault after an incident with his jiu-jitsu coach, Rodrigo Boti, at the Ohio Combat Club, which the two own together. There was allegedly an incident where Brown maintains he was pushed first and then punched Boti once. However, Boti maintains there was a lot more involved, including further injury to a bad eye he has and is planning to take Brown to court over the matter. Brown is scheduled to fight Johnny Hendricks on March 14th in Dallas, Texas at UFC 185. And we look ahead to Saturday night's action kicking off on Fight Pass at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Then we'll be presenting the prelim fights live here on Fight Network featuring Nick Lentz and Levon Makashvili as well as Zach Makovsky, Tim Elliott. Main card kicks off at 10 Eastern over on TSN 5 with six fights coming your way headlined by Benson Henderson and Brandon Thatch in your welterweight main event. All right, here we are. John Ramdi and Robin Black. Big weekend coming up. Saturday Night Live, 40th anniversary Sunday night. Wow, Eddie Murphy's Valentine's coming back. Day. Eddie Murphy's coming back. Chevy Chase, I can't Yay. wait. It's Valentine's Day, too. Apparently, and all of us are working on Valentine's Day, so it's very that. popular. Uh, but on Valentine's Day, Benson Henderson is stepping up to take on Brandon Thatch. We heard from Benson Henderson earlier this week. And Robin, we had, we had the opportunity to speak to both of these guys ahead of time. And just uh, some of your conclusions, having talked to both guys at this point, and uh, especially Benson Henderson just seems to be um, the cut down to 170, taking much less effort than 155 and proving to have uh, a much easier fight week. Yeah, you know, the one thing that this week has taught me is the more that you know about mixed martial arts, the less you know about mixed martial arts. Because it's been awesome having the UFC every weekend and getting ready to do our pre-show and our post-show because you got to dive in even deeper than we ever have before. So we interview Brandon Thatch, and I'm thinking all week, I'm looking at the guy, and it's like, he is enormous, 200 pounds, 200 plus pounds, five inch height advantage, four and a half inch reach advantage, huge power, 10 or 11 first round finishes, crazy shot. I'm like, I don't know what Ben Henderson is doing on two weeks notice, this is crazy. Why would you go up a weight class? Then you talk to Ben Henderson, and John and I talked to him, he literally had his head fully wrapped around all of the different challenges of this guy. The height, the weight, the way he moves, his choices in the cage. Man, this guy had his head wrapped around everything. He's in great shape mentally and physically at 170 pounds. And all of a sudden, my whole momentum going, this Thatch guy is gonna, this is a terrible fight for the former lightweight champion. Now I'm going in going, I don't know, man. Ben Henderson, I reviewed all this tape. He's really prepared for this fight. Especially when you look at the fact, if I'm Ben Henderson, I'd look, Frankie Edgar a couple times. You just look at the list of guys. <laughs> Anthony Pettis, Donald Cerrone. It just goes on and on. He has faced the elite of elite. So 
the, taking this fight where he's not going to have to deplete himself. I know he's kind of handicapped because yeah, he's not going to have a full training camp mm -hmm. to make sure that the cut goes, the, or I guess no, no real cut because he's going up in weight. But just having to yeah. deal with that, manage his weight properly, ha doesn't have to focus on those things. That might be an issue. But because of his experience and his creativity, I think we're going to be surprised how good Ben Henderson looks at 170 pounds. It's kind of one of those moments where you step back and wonder, like, Obviously, we, we are going to talk about this stuff every day, and that can lead to us, you know, overanalyzing mm -hmm. stuff. And you look at all these little different factors, and something as simple as uh, Josh Hill is a minus or plus eight hundred underdog going in. So that and was he dumb. Wins the opening round yeah. against Marlon Marais. Two, the, two, rounds. The fifth round. two rounds. Two rounds. Yeah. So yeah. I think that you can you can look at so many different factors. At the end of the day, it's a fight, and no matter what preparation you have, no matter what mindset you have, it's a fight, and. So many different variables can happen. I look at Chris Kalaitis, huge underdog against Ray Borg. I think a very winnable fight for of Chris Kalaitis on it Saturday is. night. Yeah, it yeah. Is. Scott McLean, his coach, knows exactly what he's doing. They'll have a great game plan. The more I analyze fighting, like, I, you know, it's all we do all week. The more you learn, everything you learn leads to more understanding. And the more you understand, I realize now when I'm doing my breakdowns and my black eye segments and stuff, my goal is to show you many of the things to look at. I want to teach you how to watch fighting, but I ain't going to like tell you who to bet on. Because it's the more you see, the crazier it is. It's just another reason to love the sport, man, because, like you said, guys who are plus 800 win all the time. But you also have to look at the fact that when it comes down to, indi this is a sport about individuals. Yes, you, they're trained and coached by the same guys. We mentioned Chris Kalaitis. Uh, this, he's, his coach is also the guy that coached TJ Grant. But they're two different individuals. When you look at all the different things that make up a that fighter. That happens a lot where we'll, people will look at camps and kind of, well, yes. this skill set must a, transfer a, over a, here. Exactly. It, it's very easy to do it that. Is. The whole pendant doesn't look anything. anything. Exactly. Yeah. And it comes down to that. It comes down to, you guys mentioned that you talked to, to uh, both guys that are going to be involved in the main event. And when you talk to these guys and you start to understand, oh, this is their motivation. These are their goals. It kind of allows you to see where how they're able to grow or opposed to being, okay, the, uh, I, I want to use George St. Pierre as an example. A lot of people say, well, he, he's a robot, and you can only teach a robot certain mm -hmm. things. You know, there's the creativity and the flow and the mindset, uh, things that you really yeah. can't necessarily teach. So there's so many factors that, uh, that lead to somebody either being great or somebody being, being mediocre or somebody not being successful at all in the UFC. Uh, quickly, uh, Bellator as well this weekend. Alexander Shlomenko, Melvin Manhoff, uh, a fight that's kind of just lost in, in all of the, the coverage this week. This is a really fun fight at 185 yeah. pounds. I think with Melvin Manhoff, uh, this is, you cannot be walking away from a Melvin Manhoff fight unsatisfied unless you could be Alexander Shlomenko and possibly looking at a cut down to 170 if this is loss number three in a row. What's interesting about this fight is the, the bookies say that uh, Melvin Manhoff his chin is suspect. And that's just not the case. Yeah. Melvin Manhoff is just a guy that constantly moves forward. And sometimes because he gets over aggressive, he leads, uh, he can um, create so, 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 so many openings for his opponent and they can capitalize. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but Melvin Manhoff, one of the most exciting fighters out there. Some very interesting fights coming up all weekend long. We will be back with you Saturday night live at this very desk, 7 p.m. Eastern for our one hour preview show, getting you set for the fight night card from Broomfield, Colorado. Prelims here, 8 Eastern Saturday night. Main card at 10 Eastern on TSN 5. You'll get a lot of us this weekend and more Fight News Now Extra is coming your way.